Hello, hello, everyone. So I'm Martina from Destinus, Senior Business Development Manager uh, from Sweden, living in Switzerland. We are trying to revolutionize the aviation industry by building a whole new type of airplane. So what is this airplane going to look like? I will show you in a little bit. But first, let me tell you a little personal story. Um, I love traveling, I must admit. I have a bit of a travel bug. I love going to new exotic environments, cultures, learning about the history. And uh, the only problem is that when I travel, I feel a little bit of guilt because I am contributing to the environment in a negative way by airplanes emitting a lot of carbon dioxide. They contribute to 2.5% of carbon dioxide emissions. And uh, this is one of the things that uh, my friends see a lot as well. So some of them choose to go by train around Europe, but this is not always a possibility if you want to go to very exotic locations. I want to go to New Zealand. Um, and uh, that is a long trip and will emit a lot of carbon dioxide. But also, the other thing is that it takes a long time. It takes about 30 hours to get to New Zealand by three to four different airplanes. So it's long and it's unenvironmentally friendly. Um, so what we're doing at Destinus, we want to try to build a new airplane that is both sustainable as well as extremely fast. It will be somewhat of a mix between a rocket and an airplane. It will fly at 30 to 40 kilometers in altitude, so up in the stratosphere, and at hypersonic velocity. So that's five times the speed of sound. Um, and the core to this whole thing is hydrogen. So our company is all about hydrogen. We're developing several different technologies for the aerospace industry, as well as other mobility sectors, and also the energy sector that relate to hydrogen technologies. Uh, we see that the aviation industry is growing significantly. There were 4 billion passengers in 2019, and there's going to be an additional 4 billion passengers by 2035. So how do we connect the world? Well, we connect it through transportation, and we see that the next step in transportation is to increase the thrust and go at hypersonic speed. Why we chose hydrogen, uh, it's not just sustainable, it's an extremely abundant resource. So there's 75% of the mass of the universe consists of hydrogen. You can get it from water by splitting water into H2 and O, a process called electrolysis, and you use renewable energy to do this. Uh, hydrogen is also extremely efficient. It has three times the energy efficiency compared to jet A fuel. So it's very good when you want to go long ranges uh, for other mobility sectors as well, such as trucks and trains and marine vessels, they're also looking into hydrogen as a fuel source. We see in terms of speed that other mobility sectors are accelerating, whilst the uh, aviation industry has been decelerating. Since the Concorde, we have not seen any supersonic commercial flights, uh, while the train industry since the 1950s has increased in speed by a tenfold. So it's time to get back to the Concorde era and make it even better. The new airplane that we have in mind will look like this. So you see it's a little bit different in terms of the shape than the airplanes that we have today. Um, that is because it will fly five times the speed of sound. So we need to make it efficient for those flights. So it doesn't have the wings in the same way as uh, normal airplanes have today. But it has a little bit of wing to, so you can take off and land. Uh, but then you just need it to be as uh, small as possible to be able to fly efficiently at high speeds. We're going to be building a 400 passenger aircraft in the future. That is the goal. Um, so you see the seats are under the air intake here. And uh, we're developing several technologies, including to the propulsion system, including the storage tanks for hydrogen, uh, and active thermal protection as well, and then thinking of a whole new aero shape. We're going after a, a shape called a wave rider. This has been studied for many, many years. For example, in uh, Europe, they had a 15-year study on uh, hypersonic technologies. So we're implementing some of this research and then making it real, putting it up in the sky and testing it. So this wave rider shape is very efficient because the vehicle essentially rides on the shock waves generated from flying above the speed of sound. So you increase the lift in that way, and it becomes more efficient. The propulsion system that we're into integrating into this vehicle, we're uh, doing it all hydrogen-based in the future. Initially, we're going to be uh, using conventional turbojet engines, 
such as those uh, produced from General Electric. We have a few of those in the uh, workshop right now that we're testing. And then we're developing the afterburner technology to go up to supersonic speed and then also ramjets to get up to hypersonic velocities. So the goal is to make this all hydrogen based. We're also developing a patented active cooling system that uses liquid hydrogen to cool down the leading edges of the vehicle. That is because when you fly at hypersonic speed, you get up to around 1000 degrees Celsius. So we're using liquid hydrogen, which is a minus 250 degrees Celsius to cool down the leading edges of the vehicle so that you can use more conventional materials and it becomes more reusable. So you can have it for a longer period of time. And this active cooling system, we have this out at our booth if you wanna go and take a look at it. So this is also about the inspiring journey and talking a little bit about what we have done over the past few years. So the company was founded in 2021, so we're only two years old. And we, uh, in Q2 2021, we had our first flight already in uh, Q4 2021. And uh, this was the flight of our first uh, prototype, Jungfrau, that we call it, or Destinus 1. Um, by the end of Q4 2021, we had a team size of about 40 people. We had raised 20 million euros and we were headquartered in Switzerland with offices in Spain and France as well. By 2022, we, um, we um, also had some additional flights Sorry, I, that first one, ignore that. That's supposed to be on the next slide. Um, we had the Destinus 2 introduced, which is this vehicle over here. It's a 10 meter subsonic vehicle that we tested out the uh, aero shape on. And by Q4, we had 80 people in the company. We raised 35 million euros. And then we added Germany as a location as well. We also started testing with uh, hydrogen. So the first propulsion test with hydrogen started last year at our facility in Switzerland. This is a video of our first flight with the second prototype. Or sorry, the, the second flight with the second prototype. So this is Eiger in 2022. Uh, it's a 10 meter vehicle. We flew it at around 300 kilometers an hour at an airport near Munich. We were testing out the shape of the vehicle. And then this is kind of our approach to test out technologies and the shape of the vehicle. First in subsonic until we go up to supersonic velocities. This flight um, showed us a lot in terms of how does it work to fly, in terms of getting the approval, but also in terms of the whole process to get prepared and ready for the supersonic flight that we're going to have next year. And this vehicle, like I mentioned, was uh, designed, built and tested in just seven months. So we're really trying to move at hypersonic speed within the company as well. These were the first engine tests that we did of a hydrogen afterburner. We did it uh, back in 2022, October 2022. We've now increased the scale of this and uh, we'll have a 10 times larger engine and then attach an afterburner to it and then uh, use uh, liquid hydrogen for the afterburner part. So that was in Switzerland and we're expanding our facilities there as well. In 2023, we recently acquired a new company or a company that has been around for 12 years called Opera. They develop gas turbines and uh, those gas turbines are quite related in terms of the technology to what we're developing. But it's also a way for us to generate some revenue so we're not just dependent on private funding. We also had our first hydrogen flight just three weeks ago and you can see that vehicle out at our booth at Static A8 if you want to have a look. Um, right now our team is 140 people. We have raised 50 million in private capital so far and about 11 million in public funding grants. Um, we also added Netherlands as a location because that is the company that we acquired. So now we're truly European based in Switzerland, Spain, France, Germany and the Netherlands. So this is our first flight with hydrogen of our first prototype Destinus 1, Jungfrau. We flew it with a, an engine that we, turbojet that we bought, and then we added an afterburner to it. So the turbojet used kerosene fuel, and then during the cruise, we switched over to hydrogen. It flew at about 300 kilometers an hour. Uh, this was also conducted at an airport close to Munich. And, uh, and we're gonna be continuing these flights in France in a couple of months time.
2024. So what is the future looking like for Destinus? We will have a supersonic flight on hydrogen. It will be the world's first supersonic flight on hydrogen, liquid hydrogen in particular. This is the vehicle here, Destinus 3, that we are introducing. We have a prototype of it out by our booth, A8, if you want to go and have a look. And we're going to have the maiden flight probably end of this year. And then mid the next year, we'll be flying it at supersonic speeds. We're also developing hydrogen infrastructure. As I mentioned, in Switzerland, we already have some infrastructure in place for gaseous hydrogen. And we're expanding this to also incorporate liquid hydrogen. This is what the facility will look like. Uh, in Switzerland, it's close to Payern. And then we're also doing a similar facility, but a bit larger, together with the government in Spain. So it's going to be at a location close to Madrid. Uh, that will have even more capabilities for testing uh, higher performances and of engines with hydrogen. Uh, the teams will be about 200 people next year, and we are expecting to have 100 million euros in revenues. This is the first aircraft, passenger aircraft, that we will introduce to the market. It's called Destinus S. It's about 40 meters in length, 25 passengers, and it uh, can take you from Paris to New York in about one and a half hours. It's going to be introduced in the 2030s. In terms of the team, we have a lot of aerospace and energy uh, experts inside of the team. As I mentioned, we're 140 people right now. We, um, we have a lot of companies that are here today where these people have come from. And uh, the team is expanding um, more and more. So we'll see a lot more exciting people in the company soon. The team is very, very global as well. So we have people coming all the way from Canada and from India as well. And that is what I want to leave with you with. So if I can say one message, it's to think big, think, uh, think what you want the future to look like. We really want the future to be more connected and more sustainable, and then go ahead and build it. So we're going step by step approach, building the aircraft, a lot of prototypes, testing things in the air, and trying to make this a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Martina, for your uh, pitch. So one last thing, as I mentioned earlier, we do have a booth outside. I think it's that direction. Um, static A8. So you can see all of these prototypes there. And you can see some of the technologies that we're developing. And also the gas turbine is out there. I'll be around here for a little bit for some questions. And uh, then I'll head over to the booth. So you're welcome to join me there. Thank you.